for the last few weeks, um, we've been dealing with the theme, Restore My Faith Again. And I think it's a very poignant uh, message um, and it's very much applicable um, to the times that we are living in. You know, there's so many different things that are going on. And um, I think it's so important, you know, that we acknowledge um, at times when our faith is low or our faith is, has gone, <laughs> you know, in God. You know, there's nothing wrong with admitting, you know, that your faith um, has gone, you know, that your faith is low. You know, as a matter of fact, the worst thing to do is to act as if you've got lots of faith, but you're operating in doubt. Um, it's always good to admit that, you know what, hands up, my faith is really low at the moment and I need to do something about it to get it back on track. I want you to turn with me to John 15, John 15, uh, 1 to 8. Um, I want to greet everyone on here. Uh, I, I see um, 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 some people on there that we don't recognize their phone, their names, but God bless you anyway. For those of you that are on here today, uh, we only can see their phones, basically. We don't see their names. Uh, it's always good to put your names when you come on the Zoom service so we know who's on here, all right? Uh, John chapter 15, from 1 to 8. John 15, 1 to 8. And I promise you I'm not going to be long. Um, I'm going to be very quick. It is now five minutes to one. Um, so I'm going to be as quick as uh, possible. John chapter 15, uh, from one to eight. And I'm going to read from there. The scripture will come up on the screen. Uh, I am the true vine and my father is the vine presser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. Let me say that one more time. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Amen. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. Amen. We want to conclude this uh, theme for the month of June. Restore my faith again. And I think that, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit has really downloaded some stuff even with my own experiences. And I wanna share this with you because I think it's very important that we understand that when we are looking at restoring our faith and when our faith is actually uh, at an all time low, there's always a root to it. There's always a reason why your faith dwindles, all right? So, you know, in this season, I really believe that God is desiring from us that we have deeper intimacy with him. Um, he wants deeper intimacy with his people. And um, many of you might ask, what is intimacy with God? Well, it means talking to God about everything. It means allowing God through his word to talk back to you. It means intentionally getting to know God. It means actively participating in worship to God, even when people are not looking. All right. Intimacy is not about the show. It's not about showing people that you are spiritual, all right? Intimacy is you and God um, getting into your word, allowing God to speak back to you through his word, prayer time, devotional time, listening, worship. It's so many different things. And in this season, I really believe that God wants us to cultivate intimacy with him, all right? Not with your favorite preacher, not with your favorite video, not with your favorite song. He wants you to he wants you to cultivate intimacy with him. Now, all these things add to that and it can help. But I want you to understand that the more you spend time with God is the more God is going to be close with you. All right. We're going to get into this because intimacy 
with God is more about what you do in private. You can come to church and, and be the loudest person in the service. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with giving God a loud praise, but you can do all those things and not have no intimacy with God. You, you can appear to be spiritual in public, but have no intimacy with God. You can appear to be uh, you know, on the mountaintop to everybody, but really there's no connection between you and God. And what God wants, he does not want uh, this fake relationship that you're trying to show people or prove pe to people that you are spiritual. He wants you to have this intimate relationship with him. Are you hearing me? This is what the Bible says in Matthew 6, verse 6 and 7. But when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly did you catch that it's about intimacy with god verse 7 it says and when you pray do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do for they think that they will be heard for their many words your faith in god listen to this your faith in god is connected to your intimacy with god you cannot have strong faith in god without intimacy there has to be a connection with you and God. There has to be a, a, a relationship that you are cultivating with God in order for your faith to be strong. The two work hand in hand. Your faith is a mirror of your relationship with God. If your faith is strong, it suggests that your relationship with God is strong. Your, your faith is as strong as your relationship with, with Jesus. And oftentimes we have to admit that sometimes we don't prioritize um, time with God. We're so busy with the children, with family life, with, with the house, with jobs, with paying bills, with this, that and the other. Dealing with everyone else's problems that we forget that God wants you to have time with him. And not your spare time. Not the time that you... You know, you can afford just a bit, 10 minutes here and a 10 minutes there. Intimacy means that you're showing God you are going to prioritize your time with him. And in that time, in that space, no one else is going to get the attention but God. That's real intimacy. For those of you that are uh, 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 in a relationship, dating, married or whatever it is, you understand that in order for you to cultivate that relationship, there has to be intimacy. Without intimacy, there will be a problem. It will spiral into so many different things, all right? So your faith is as strong as your relationship with God. The reason why sometimes your faith has gone down um, it is a lack of intimacy. The, the, the fire that you used to have, you know, um, the flames that you used to have, you know, it's dwindled because you don't have no intimacy. And as a result of a lack of intimacy, it affects your faith. Because intimacy and faith goes hand in hand together. You cannot separate it. Show me someone who is intimate with God, intimate, has time with God, and then show me their faith. I guarantee you that their faith will be strong. Are you hearing me today? This is very important. I want you to, 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 to catch this because there's a story, there's, there's something that happened a, a few weeks ago and I thought it was so amazing as we looked at this particular scripture concerning bearing fruit and that how bearing fruit is the process of intimacy with God. You know, I had these plants and um, I don't know what happened, but these plants looked like they were dying. I, I love these plants. And they were dying. I don't know if I over watered it or whatever, but they just started to die. And I was thinking, why is all the leaves turning brown and, 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 and they're flopping? And no matter what I tried to do, it just would not get back to its normal self. And when I looked closely, I noticed that the old dead leaves and weeds were killing the new plant, the new leaves 
that were trying to um, um, spring up. And I thought, okay, all right, I'm just going to, I'm just going to throw this away. So in my mind, I was getting ready to throw the plants away and just get some new ones, start afresh. Don't we think like that sometimes? You know, we, we always think about, okay, let me just throw that away. Let me just get rid of that. I'll get a new one. But when I looked into I thought, hold on a second. Let me try taking out all the dead leaves and weeds that was around the plant. Um, and it, when I finished with it, it actually looked very bare. But the next day, oh my goodness, it started to sprout again. And it showed me something that oftentimes what you don't pay attention to in your spiritual walk with God will end up dying. You can easily be in church every Sunday and your faith is not strong. You can easily be doing works and doing things in the church and being active and your faith is not strong. Sometimes we have to look very closely to some of the weeds and the dead things that are surrounding our life and we've got to pull it out because it's actually preventing growth. That's why in the Bible, it talked about God pruning us. Pruning is not God being horrible. Pruning is God saying, you know something, there's some things around you that needs, needs to be taken out because it's preventing your growth. And the minute I started to take out the dead leaves and the, all the different things that was in there, I said, okay, let me give this a try. I took it all out. And when I looked at the plant, it, it looked like it was stripped right back to nothing. And I thought, oh my gosh, poor plant. <laughs> and then the next day, I kid you not, it was almost like it was a completely different plant. God is trying to tell us something. That in order for us, you know, to really be strong in our faith, to be intimate, we got to sometimes look and think, okay, there's some things that are hindering my growth. There's some things that are preventing me from going to the next level. And you've got to learn and allow God to prune us. Sometimes we don't want God to prune us. I kid you not, it's not a nice thing sometimes. Because sometimes he stripped you back and you think, I ain't got nothing now. But God is saying, if you allow him to take some stuff out, if you allow him to prune you, if you allow him to uh, take some things that you think you need. You know, I love this plant and this plant was once, a, it was like that, it was so big. And, and I thought, oh my gosh, now I've stripped it all back. It's gonna, now it's just flourishing because I've decided to take out the dead thing. I'm talking to someone right now that is struggling with their faith, but have not addressed intimacy with God. Uh, I heard, Bishop T.D. Jakes talk about this acronym and he said, into me see, intimacy, into me see, which means that God has to look into all of us and take out some stuff. Are you hearing me today? It's very important because we're living in a time now where, uh, where we're so inundated with so many different things, you know, so many things is going on right now. We're, we're, we're so busy. Everyone's busy doing this and we, you know, we're so busy. Even if those of you just spent the whole day on, on, on Instagram, you're busy, right? You're just busy. You're busy just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And nobody can't interrupt you when you're scrolling, scrolling, but you're, you're just so busy. You know, uh, uh, you know uh, it's, it, we're living in this time now where we have so much choices, this, that, and the other. And I realize, I realize that if I don't make sure that I put some time to spend time with God, things can start to go bad in my mind and in my heart. When you don't have the word of God in your heart, I tell you, there's some horrible things that can come in your heart. Can I speak to some real people? You know, uh, that's why I love to play worship music. I love to listen to the word uh, and, and while I'm driving on long journeys, because I'm telling you now, uh, sometimes the enemy, if there's gaps and spaces in your life that don't have God, I'm telling you, the enemy will fill it with all kinds of nonsense. You're there thinking about stuff and pondering over this and pondering over that. And then before long, you start thinking negative. You start thinking hate. You start thinking all kinds of stuff. The devil is a liar. I want you in this coming week, I want you to spend some time with God. I want you to really look into 
uh, some of the things that's taking your attention right now. Maybe you were someone that really set some time to pray to God. Maybe you were a t- person that loved to read God's word and somehow you found that you, you're not interested no more. You know, you, you, you don't pray as often as you used to. And let me make you understand something. We don't force people to pray or to read their word because that's not true relationship. It's almost like you forcing someone to love you. That's, that's not intimacy. That's not real, a, a real relationship where you have to force someone to love you. It's something that you want to do. But how do I stir that? The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I, I, I've not got the strength to pray for myself, but I need to associate myself with people that pray. I need to listen to people that pray. I need to be in an atmosphere where there is worship and there's prayer so that it ignites me again. Some of us need to be ignited again. We've gone down and we, we, you know, everybody just thinks we're our normal self, but really the truth of the matter is we are not where we used to be. And God is saying right now, I want to do something. I want to, I want you to bear fruit. You can't bear fruit by yourself. If you don't abide in me and I in you, you cannot bear no fruit. It's no wonder why your prayer life is under attack. Oh my gosh. Why is somebody's prayer life under attack? Because the enemy knows that the minute you open up your mouth and begin to pray, seek God, begin to have an active intimacy time with God, he knows that there's certain things he cannot do in your mind, in your heart. I wish to God that we would find people that would find someone who who you can pray with and say, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what's happening. My life is going down in terms of my intimacy with God. And I really need to be around some spiritual people. Spiritual people don't gossip. Let me chat for myself. Spiritual people, if you are around people and all they do is gossip, those are not the people around to be around. You need to be around people who are real, to, who, who want to pray, who want to seek God, who want to see your progress in spiritual things. And I want to encourage you this week, take some time aside. I know you've got stuff to do. Me too. I know you're busy. Me too. I know that there's so many different things on your mind. Yes, I agree with that. But if we want to restore our faith, we've got to understand that without intimacy, your faith cannot be restored. God wants to meet you right where you are. He wants to meet you right where you are right now. He wants to meet you there. Someone's saying, well, gosh, I I feel, I don't know. I feel so low. I feel feel as if I don't have no energy. I, I feel you. It's okay. It's good to admit that you are not where you should be in God. It's fine. Don't beat yourself up about it. But you've got to be intentional now. You've got to acknowledge that there's some things there, some roots, some dead things that's prevented my growth. growth, And I need the Lord to prune me so that I can grow again. Bring back the desire for worship. Bring back the desire for the word. Bring back the desire for, for praying. Oh my gosh. And watch God move. This is what he says. This is what the Bible says. It says, so humble yourself before God, resist the devil and he will flee. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Did you get that? Come close to God and God will come close to you. There's something strategic that you've got to do. I I need God to do something. Come on, be honest with him. God, I need you to do something in my life. I need you to stir me up again. I'm I'm not where I should be, but don't stay there. Don't stay there. Do something about it. God is going to restore your faith when you are focused on intimacy with him. God bless you in Jesus' name.